You heard a calling from a void deep inside and you answered ready and found yourself here at Karen's Couch. Welcome to your quest of personal mastery. Well, hello there and welcome. Welcome to Karen's Couch. What a treat it is to have you guys here sharing this with me. And if you are listening on Spotify or Apple iTunes or um, Google Play, wherever it is that you get your podcasts, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And if you're joining me on YouTube and watching the live video, well, hi. Great to see you. Great to meet you. And great to share the couch with you. If you haven't already, grab yourself a lovely coffee, come and sit down and have a conversation with me. I'm excited to get today's show started. I don't know about you guys, but there's definitely a feeling of um, disturbance in the air at the moment, don't you think? Are you feeling it? Like there's a sensation where it's a little uncomfortable, things are a little bit sticky, things don't work quite so well, we're forcing ourselves or being caused to go inside and being forced to go inside rather than looking at the world outside for our stability and a sense of safety and connectedness. And I think that what it's actually doing is it's driving us to have a better relationship with ourselves, which will then ultimately give us a better relationship with the world outside and everyone in it. So welcome to today's podcast on Karen's Couch, where we are diving down the rabbit hole as we always do into what's juicy, what's going on for you, what's going on for me, and how we can come out the other side bigger, better, faster, and stronger. Today I want to explore how challenging the energies have actually been for us. And when I say the energies, I'm talking about the energy here on the planet, the energy between each of us as humans, the energy within our own skin bag, and then also the energy that's being caused by the astrological movements. If you don't already know, I've started studying astrology and astronomy, and I'm really, really excited to witness and to observe how the pull and push and play of the planets influences us as humans in every aspect. And I mean every aspect. When it comes to our food, when it comes to our cars, when it comes to our choices, the color of our clothes, the things we love and don't love, our purpose, our reason for being, our motivation, our own internal inspiration, all of that is influenced by where the planets were when you were born and where the planets are right now. It's all influenced, all of, our, all of our psyche, all of our experiences have an influence from the planetary forces above. Now that was never considered the case back in the Newtonian days because they didn't think that the planets were close enough to have an influence on us. But let's just look at that. You know, the moon has an influence on the women's menstrual cycle. The moon also influences our tides and the sizes of our waves. Now, if that's the moon, what else are the planets able to influence, influence us with? We've missed out on a whole magical source of education where we have been able to know ourselves better through the planetary alignment. But then also the part that I love the most in evolutionary astrology, it's all about reaching beyond what the planet's provided on the day that you were born. It's like giving us a bit of a blueprint to say, well, if Pluto was in Aquarius when you were born, it's going to mean X, Y, and Z. And if Mercury was in, you know, Gemini when you were born, it means X, Y, and Z. And now how do we go beyond that as a prognosis for our lives? How do we become better and use those as launch pads, which I'm very excited to talk to you guys about today. So let's dive into what's happening on the planet at the moment. Let's have an exploration about some of the challenges that we're facing and let's talk about what that feels like and see if you resonate for this, with this. A lot of my clients, I'm a business coach, all of you guys know that, and a lot of my clients have been feeling exactly the same way. It's where we've come into this new year and 
there have been great expectations since COVID and our expectations of what a new year will look like for us. We feel like now at this point, a lot of my clients, a lot of people that I'm talking to are feeling like that their skin just doesn't fit anymore and it's time to morph into a new skin bag. It's time for us to transform and to transcend and to, and to evolve and expand. So what does that actually mean? Well, I can tell you this much, it's uncomfortable as hell. Because when you feel like it, your skin is too small for what your vision is and what you can see and the, and the wonderment of what is possible, it's, it's, it's such a disconcerting feeling and it feels very disturbing. But what's been very, very interesting is finding comfort in the discomfort. And I know that that's like very trite and people say it all the time, you've got to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. But what I've come to realize over this period of time, because I've been experiencing this for myself as well, but what I've come to realize over this time is that, you know what, discomfort is actually the precursor to growth. If you think about your whole life, even when you were a child and you were getting taller, you got pains in your joints and your muscles and you felt painful. It was sore to actually get taller. It was sore to grow. And pain is always that. Like it's, 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 it can either be something that's debilitating for us that keeps us stuck and trapped and circling inside of the pain, talking about the pain, going to support groups about the pain. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But what I'm suggesting is that we can either get stuck in the pain or we can say, you know what, this is a precursor to growth for me. And what is that growth going to look like? How am I going to capitalize on this and not squander it and not make it mean something other than growth? You know, sometimes we'll make our pain mean we're not good enough. We'll make our pain mean that we're insufficient and that the world doesn't accept us and we can't get it right and there's something wrong with us perhaps, we'll often make our pain have meanings that are very debilitating and then that is actually what we get stuck in, not the pain. We get stuck in the debilitating meaning and then that becomes our story about ourselves and our story about our lives. Well, I want to say to you guys, you know, there is so much more to life than our story about ourselves. There is wonderment, there's expansion, there's experimenting, there's experiencing, and there's the willingness to say, I participate with life without hanging off or hanging on to anything that's going to keep me playing small or anything that's going to keep me being the same as I was yesterday. Because life is for the living. Life is for breathing it in. Life is for expanding and for growing. And it doesn't come without the discomfort of growing pains. We just have to kind of get used to that and recognize it as that. Now, here's what I also want to share with you guys. If you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I'm a spiritual soul and you will also know that I have been developing the psychic abilities over the last couple of years. I can't not. It's like it just doesn't, it doesn't leave me. It's knocking on my door, knocking on my heart constantly. So here's what I want to share with you guys about the insights that have come to me about where we are in this span of time. And if this resonates for you, wonderful. If this doesn't resonate for you, well, that's okay. Don't take it on. Just leave it. Leave it to the side. Don't take it on because it's not going to be for everybody, okay? And that's really what all of this stuff, the spiritual stuff is about. If it fits you like a jumper and it's the right size, wear it. If it feels too small, get rid of it. Or if it feels too big, get rid of it. Don't force yourself to carry baggage that doesn't belong to you, right? So what I've been getting from a very spiritual perspective is that we are in a changing time and that there is great growth and great learning and great opportunity that is available to the human race if we have our eyes and our ears open. There are two forces at play. There's the force of the light and the force of the dark. The force of the dark is fueled and fed by your fear, chaos, anxiety, 
uncertainty, trepidation, shifts in personality, and a general feeling of unsafety. And it's almost as if the dark forces, if they were an entity of themselves, it's almost as if they create chaos in order to keep you in fear, in order to continue being fed. Does that make sense? It's kind of a, it's, it's a random way to put it, but I'm trying to kind of personify it a little bit so that it, it, it becomes quite real. Because the dark side or the dark forces or the dark energies the more collective consciousness is in a state of fear or in a state of chaos or in a state of negativity the more that the dark forces are winning right so it kind of makes sense if you think of them like a big monster or well, maybe not a monster they're not a monster maybe think of it like a person the more we feed them the more we nourish them and their food and their nourishment is fear and anxiety. The more we do that, the more that side of, um, of consciousness becomes developed. Then there's the light side. The light side is fueled and fed by love. Full stop, end of conversation, done. <laughs> now, I actually think... This is me speaking now, um, not the other side. I actually think that COVID was part of a rite of passage. And I had this conversation with my mum this morning. I wonder if COVID perhaps was a rite of passage where it really showed those that would be willing to feed the dark forces and those that will only focus on the light. Because there was a real distinction, don't you think? There was a huge distinction between people who were in absolute terror and were very argumentative and wanted to fight for their beliefs on either side of the fence, by the way, they were aggressive and um, trying to enforce their opinions and their viewpoints. And, you know, it was it was a really tough time. And families were separated. Relationships were destroyed. It was horrendous from that point of view. And when I look back on it, I think, okay, well, if there are two forces at play and there's the light and the dark, well, that would have been a time where the dark forces would have been well and truly fed and nourished and they would be fat cats by now because there was a lot of that. But what it did also show, especially afterwards and after more information has become available, I think what it's showing is that we are moving through a transition where people now will recognize, well, you know what? I reacted with a lot of fear and I reacted based on what I was told. I didn't necessarily do my own research perhaps, or maybe you did. So, you know, I'm not making any judgments or statements about that. So please don't send me messages about it. <laughs> but all I'm suggesting is that what we've seen since COVID, we've also seen people move to a lighter way of being because they've seen that perhaps they didn't have all of the information and the places where the people that they trusted weren't giving them all the information. They were holding information back. And so now there's a lot of us that are looking with open eyes and saying, well, you know what, if that ever happens again, I might behave differently. I probably will respond quite differently and I probably will lean into a lighter way of being rather than leaning into so much fear, chaos, negativity, withholding, dramatic uh, aggression, fighting, and, and needing to be proven right. So I wonder if coming through COVID and having that real big distinction between the light and the dark, that now the light has far more chance of taking a greater hold of the collective consciousness than what the dark does. And of course, when we see, when we look into the planets and we see Pluto has moved from Capricorn into Aquarius, it's gone from a very structured, um, systemized, hierarchical, power driven um, position to something that is more humanitarian, more based on the group, based on the collective, more based on light, more based on winning. And not about the power struggle, but more about a community. So we are going to see massive changes occurring, especially in the hierarchies that we've created in society. We are going to see massive changes occur. And we're going to see people who are going to be very distinctly one way or the other. But here's what I want to say about that, is that people in and of themselves are not dark. They just 
haven't learned about the light. It's like if I walk into a, into a dark room and I don't know where the light switch is, I'm going to be fumbling around looking for the light switch and I have to even know that there's a light switch there. Does that make sense? And so I think a lot of people who do feed the dark forces with all of the fear and all the trepidation and chaos, they don't know. They just don't know that there is another way to be and that that light is their option and love is their option. And that's where it comes down to us. And that's where it comes down to things like this show and this podcast is that, you know, the invitation for all of us is to step into the light side and be an example of what's possible for the rest of the planet. Now, that might feel like a really big task to you, but if one of us doesn't do it, it's never going to start. And if we don't start, we'll never end. So it is time to start and it is time for one of us to step up. And I mean you, if you're listening and watching, I mean you. Yep, that's who I'm talking to. I'm specifically talking to you. It's up to each one of us to take responsibility for who we intend to be on this planet and then be that to the fullest expression of what's possible. And then don't keep your light hidden underneath the shroud. Take your light out. It doesn't mean that you go sprouting and telling everybody everything that they need to be doing. That's the worst thing that you can do. If people ask, how come you're so positive and how come life works for you? How come you're in flow all the time and how come you attract so much abundance and how come you're the lucky person? When people ask you questions like that, go nuts. Tell them everything. But if they're not asking the question, then all that's required of you is to simply be an example of what's possible for them rather than sprouting and telling them what they need to be doing because all that that does, it, is in, it invalidates their own human experience and it assumes you know how to be them and live their life better than they do. And no one, and I mean no one on the planet, will, use, will allow their own personal power to be usurped to that extent where someone will say you don't know how to be you don't know how to be right you don't know how to be a good person you don't know how to do it properly so I will tell you how to do it and if you follow my way you'll be right wow jeepers I think those days are well and truly gone hey I think for most of us, we're more interested in our own sovereignty. We're interested in our own self-led light. Ooh, I like that. It's a bumper sticker, isn't it? Self-led light where we can lead ourselves. Because here's the thing, you know, I know this even as a business coach and a life coach, if I'm not around and my clients can't get hold of me and everything turns turtle in their world and I haven't equipped them with how to deal with themselves and the tools that they need, then they're going to crumble without me there. So that's not what we want. We don't want to create reliance. We want to create resilience. I'm going to say that again. We're not looking to create reliance. We're wanting to create resilience. So when we look at the world around us and we look at everything that's going on around us, what I want to say, guys, is we can do this so much better if we stop wishing for things to be different, accept that it is uncomfortable at the moment, and I can promise you this right now, the discomfort of what's happening on a global and a planetary scale has only just begun. Pluto has only just moved into Aquarius, and it's only just begun begun because it's going to go retrograde and then it's going to come back into Aquarius. So it will be fixed permanently in Aquarius early next year. But we are going to see preliminary crumblings, preliminary crashings, foldings, destruction of systems and structures. We're going to see complete changes from hierarchical power-driven structures to more community-oriented humanitarian structures. What that's going to look like, who knows? But I can tell you this much, you are going to feel, I am going to feel, we're all going to feel a little bit of discomfort over the coming six to 12 months. But here's the magical part about that. And you can feel this already because I know you can. There is a place within you that is eternally safe. 
There is a place within you that is eternally comforted, solid, not uncertain, not afraid. And if you want to go in and have a look, have a look around your heart area, have a look around your solar plexus area. And those are the parts where your soul and your essence resides inside of this beautiful skin bag. So go in and have a look and just feel into those spaces. And when you feel into those spaces, notice everything becomes quiet between your two ears. And that is what we are looking for. We're looking for the noise to come to an end. We're looking for you to start finding peace inside so that then no matter what happens on the outside, you remain centered, you remain whole, you remain a peaceful being, and you feel like it doesn't matter. I'm good. And I've got people around me that are good. And I'm working with people that are good. And I'm making an effort to contribute to the co collective consciousness with love, compassion, understanding, support, clarity, certainty, blissfulness, happiness, joy, enthusiasm, puppies, all the things. I'm working on that. I'm not contributing to the collective consciousness that is based around chaos, fear, negativity, darkness, and destruction. I'm not doing that anymore, not in any way, shape, or form. So I want to encourage you guys to look at every aspect of your life, hey? Let's have a look at our food. How do we move from being frightened of what we eat? How do we move from being frightened of wheat, being frightened of dairy, being frightened of anything? How do we move away from being frightened of our food to being at peace with our plate, ending that war within. How do we make peace with food so that if I eat a date, I don't freak out? If I have an ice cream, it's okay. If I have a, a snow pea, that too is okay. Where we're not frightened of food, but food just becomes fuel for us to live these amazing lives and do all the wonderful things that we wanna do. How do we, how do we move from darkness where there's negativity, chaos, fear, and anxiety, to love, peace, serenity, acceptance, even in the discomfort, acceptance. How do we do that? How do we do that in our relationships with our significant others? How do we move from being frightened they'll leave, frightened they'll cheat, frightened they'll lie, frightened they leave, leave the toilet seat up? How do we move from the negativity of them not doing enough or them not doing what we want them to do or you know whatever all the things that come up in relationships and there's a lot you know because when you put two people together that are not necessarily the same you're always going to have rough ed rough edge against rough edge from time to time so how do we move from judgmental chaotic negative fear and anxiousness to love compassion serenity surrender, releasing, no judgment, allowing people to be who they are. And if that's not right for you, proximity is always an option. You can always leave is what I'm saying. But what I am also saying is that when we make room for people to be who they are, this is what I love to believe. When we make room for people to be who they are, no one is waking up with the intention of being a butt face. Nobody wakes up with the intention of ruining your day and being an absolute ass. They really don't. So if it happens, it's usually a mistake. But we don't tend to make room for people to make mistakes. Now, if you're with somebody, you're with them for a reason. You chose them because you thought they were great. Where's that gone? Where's that greatness? Look for that again. Start looking for what, looking at what you do have rather than what you don't have. Because it's never going to be perfect. But you know what? None of us actually are. So let's start making room for each other to be exactly who we are. Start taking away some of the boundaries. Start taking away some of the expectations. Because I'll tell you the downside of boundaries and expectations is you have to police those things. So then all of your energy goes into policing your boundaries as opposed to being free to just love and love unconditionally and love without having to be right, without having to be right that that person is wrong. God, that's so much energy. Give up the need to be right. Who cares? You've got your view, they've got their view, move on. You know, if it's something that you can't 
move away from or if it's a distinct value conflict, well, then you may have some conversations that you need to have. And that's up to you. You guys know your, you know, you know where you're going with all of that. But what I'm saying is on the day-to-day, -day, on the normal, on the daily, make room for each other. Do the same thing with your children. Do the same thing with your boss. Do the same thing with the people that you work for and with. Make room for everybody to just be themselves and give up the need to judge. Judging is the biggest nail in the coffin of expansion. Judgment stops growth. Judgment halts love. Judgment is the number one thing that will keep you from being free. Because if you are judging the world outside of yourself, I can assure you, you are judging yourself way harsher. And nothing is worth that. So to move from the dark, the dark energies into the lighter energies, look at every aspect of your life and start to tune into a higher vibrational frequency. Start to tune into the color of love. For me, the color of love is this soft marshmallowy pink. <laughs> and very white, a whitey-she marshmallowy-she pink. <laughs> so tune into the color of love for yourself. Tune into the frequency of love for yourself. Tune into the frequency of love for your pets, your plants, your home, all the things that you have in your wardrobe, all the things that you the, the people that you have around you. Tune into the frequency of love and let that become your new high. Because the universe does not respond to what you say and what you ask for. It responds to who you are and it responds to your frequency. So we're going to do another show on frequency shortly. So make sure that you stay tuned to that one. But in the meantime, I guess the message of today's show is give up the fear. Give up the chaos and trade it for a bit of love and light and just see if it feels a little bit better. Give up the need to be right. Give up the need to judge because those are the, those are the two biggest things that are going to keep you trapped in the dark side. And you can feel it. It's heavy. It's dark inside and you feel clunky. And actually, when you feel in that state, your frequency is decreased so you can never find flow. You'll find everything in your world becomes clunky. You want to find flow? You want to find ease? Raise your frequency, transition into the side of love and let the energies outside do as they may. You become an observer, not judge, jury and executioner. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Tune in next time to Karen's Couch. I'm going to be talking all about frequency. I'm going to be talking about how you can raise your vibrational frequency and manage your vibrational frequency to such an extent that you become magnetic to the very things that you dream of and desire for. It's much easier than what you think, and it happens much quicker than what you think. So tune in next time to Karen's Couch. I can't wait to share that show with you guys. Make sure you bring your coffee with you, and I'll see you right here on the couch. Bye for now.